Okay. So the solution set of a linear system of equations contains all ordered pairs that satisfy all the equations of the system at the same time. You weren't meant to guess it. <laughs> How do you satisfy math? Um, an ordered pair will satisfy an equation if it makes the equation true. Basically. Oh, yeah. Good job. So, for example, decide whether the given ordered pair is a solution of the given system. So, this is our system of equations, and we are given this ordered pair, and we want to know if it's a solution. Well, for it to be a solution, it has to satisfy both of these equations. So, all we do is, since this is an ordered pair, four is our x and two is our y. So, we plug those values into each equation. And see if it works. So x plus y equals six. Instead of x plus y, we're going to use four plus two because that's our x and y values. Well, four plus two is six, and six equals six. So the ordered pair does work for the first equation. Let's try the second equation. 4x, but instead of x, we're plugging in 4 minus y, which is 2, equals 14. 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 minus 2 is 14. And 14 equals 14. So this ordered pair does satisfy both of the equations in the system, which means it is a solution. Rather than writing all of that, let's just say yes as our answer. So we know the yes indicates the ordered pair is a solution of the given system. Okay, number two, we're given a new system and a new ordered pair. So now negative one is our X and seven is our Y. And we need to try those in both of these equations. So the first equation, three X plus two Y equals 11. Three times negative one, because that's our X, plus two times seven, because that's our Y equals 11. So that's negative three plus 14. Negative three plus 14 is 11 and 11 equals 11, yay. All right, now I need to try the second equation, x plus five y equals 36. So x is negative one plus five y, which is seven equals 36. We've got negative one plus 35 equals 36. Negative one plus 35 is 34. And 34 does not equal 36. So this ordered pair is not a solution of the given system. Our answer on this one is no. No meaning the ordered pair is not a solution of the given system. That means no. Any questions on those examples? All right. We're gonna look at the graphs of linear systems in two variables. All that means is in two variables means there's gonna be an X and a Y. Later on, we're gonna have three variables, X, Y, and Z. But for now, we're just looking at two variables. So there's three things that can happen when you graph a system of linear equations. The first thing that could happen is that the two graphs intersect in a single point. So what that's gonna look like, we have our coordinate plane. You could have literally any two lines that intersect.
So how many solutions do you think this type of system would have? One, and where would that solution be? Where they cross? That point right there is the one solution of those two linear equations. It's important that we remember we are talking about linear equations, so lines. If we had curved graphs, that might not be the case. They could intersect in more than one spot if they were not linear equations. But for now, we're just looking at linear equations. Okay, the second thing that could happen is that the graphs are parallel lines. You guys know what parallel lines look like? Pretend those are straight. So how many solutions in this system of equations? We'll say no solutions. So in order for there to be a solution, there has to be an ordered pair that satisfies both equations. These two lines will have no points in common because they'll never touch. The third thing that could happen is that the graphs are the same line. A right, little bit hard to draw a picture of this. I'm gonna just darken this line. Technically, that is two lines, one on top of the other. How many solutions here? Infinite solutions. <laughs> I can't even spell it, apparently. Yeah, I put an extra T. So because these two lines have every single point in common and this line goes on and on forever in both directions, the solutions are infinite. Okay, we won't be doing, we won't be doing too much work with actual graphs of systems of equations, but I wanted you guys to see and understand these concepts. So let's move on to the back of our notes. Okay, so now on the front page, we were given an ordered pair and we were testing to see if it was a solution. Now we are actually going to find the solution ourselves. We're gonna do that by substitution. So all that means is for substitution, we are gonna take one of the variables and replace it with something from the other equation. So for example, this second equation, in this system is already solved for x. x equals y plus 2. So in this equation, where there is an x, we can replace that with y plus 2, because that's what x is equal to. So instead of x here, we're going to put y plus 2. I took the first equation. I substituted in y plus 2 for x. We can do that because those two things are equal. Our second equation tells us that. Now we have an equation that only has one variable, so we can solve and get a value for that variable. So distribute the two to get rid of those parentheses. We get 2y plus 4 minus y equals 6. I'm going to take a second to explain this one mistake that I see a lot in students' work. Instead of combining 2y minus y, a lot of people will do this and add y to both terms. That is incorrect. 
you only do something like this if you are moving something from one side of the equal sign to the other. If you're combining terms on the same side of the equal sign, you just combine them based on what signs they already have. So 2y minus y is 1y, or just y, plus 4 equals 6. So now, for example, I'm trying to get rid of this plus 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides to move that 4 to the other side. So we get a y value of two. Yes. Mm -hmm. The two y minus y to get y. But yes, so I subtracted it. Two y minus one y. Like two apples minus one apple is one apple but the apples are why. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Pony Chris, that's the only good kind. Okay, M&Ms is better actually. Okay, so now we have a value for y. We need to find a value for x. And we do that by using this second equation that's already solved for x. But now we know what y is, so we can plug in our value for y. So instead of x equals y plus 2, we have x equals 2 plus 2, because we know y equals 2. So x equals 4. We write our solution as an ordered pair. Remember, x comes first and then y. So our solution is 4, 2. Questions on this example? All right, let's look at number two. What's different about number two? Yeah, there's not, we don't have an equation that's solved for one of the variables yet. So we need to solve for one of the variables to be able to then substitute into the other equation. So take this second equation, x plus y equals two. Which variable do we want to solve for? It really doesn't matter. You guys pick. Okay, if we want to solve for x, that means we need to get rid of this y. So subtract y from both sides. We get x equals 2 minus y. Now we can use this first equation, and instead of x, we plug in what x is equal to, which is 2 minus y. So we've got five times two minus y minus three y equals negative six. Now, if you chose to solve for y in that first or in the second equation, you would end up with the same answers. It doesn't matter which variable you solve for. Mm -hmm. And then you would have plugged it in here instead of here. Yeah. Okay. Solve this equation for y, so distribute the 5 to get rid of the parentheses. Combine like terms, we've got negative 5y minus 3y is negative 8y. Get rid of this 10 by subtracting 10 from both sides. When you do that, it leaves a negative 8y. Negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16. Divide both sides by negative 8 to get y by itself. We get y equals positive 2. Again. Now we find our x value by going back to our equation that we had already solved for x and plug in our value for y. Yeah. So x equals zero. Our solution as an ordered pair is zero, two.
Questions? Okay, let's write down the steps for solving a linear system by substitution. We just used the steps, but I want you to have them in plain English as you work practice problems later. So the first step is to solve one of the equations for either variable. Number two, substitute for that variable in the other equation. Number three, solve that equation from step two. Then find the value of the other variable. So let's do this practice one together. Solve the system. So the first step is to solve one of the equations for either variable. So I'll let you guys kind of tell me how to do this. We've got two equations. We can choose either one, and then we can choose either X or Y in that equation. So which equation? Okay, second equation, which variable should we solve for? X. Okay, anybody want to solve for Y? <laughs> Maybe. You know what? Let's you solve for X. I said you choose. We've solved for X. We've solved for X at random. Yeah, but we're getting five. Let's just go ahead. <laughs> okay, so if I want to solve for this 4X, I need to add Y to both sides. I get 4X equals negative 1 plus Y or y minus one, if you wanted to write it that way, that'd be fine too. Divide both sides by four to get x by itself. So we have to divide both of these terms by four. So we get negative one fourth plus one fourth y. Huh? Yeah. No, this is fine. This is why you want to do it. <laughs> so I wrote it as one fourth y instead of y over four, just because when we plug this into the other equation, I think that'll make it easier. So just a little note on that. All right, so now we're using this other equation, but instead of x, we're plugging in negative one fourth plus one fourth y. Distribute the three to get rid of those parentheses. So we've got negative three fourths plus three fourths y plus two y equals 13. And if you happen to do this in your calculator, I would suggest leaving these as fractions instead of changing them to decimals. A denominator of four wouldn't be too terrible as a decimal, but if you had a denominator of three, your decimals would end up being like 0.3 repeating or 0.6 repeating, and that would not be easy to work with. So I recommend keeping them as fractions. But now we need to add 3 fourths y plus 2y. Just a little scratch work here. 3 fourths plus 2, I can write 2 as 8 over 4. So that now they have the same denominator and I can get 11 fourths. Okay, so that was scratch work. We have negative 3 fourths plus 11 fourths y equals 13. Mm. This is way more complicated than if we had done it the other way, but that's okay. It's good practice. <laughs> Add three fourths to both sides. Okay, I need 13 to have a denominator of four. What's 13 times four? 52? 
Yes. Yeah. Is that true? Has, has someone actually put that in a calculator? <laughs> it is 52. Wow. It's like I'm a math teacher or something. It's 52. Okay. So then when we add three fourths, we get 55 fourths equals 11 fourths y. Okay, we need to divide both sides. I'm gonna have to move up here where I have more room. I honestly didn't know it was gonna get this complicated. Divide both sides by 11 over four to get y by itself. Then we have some more scratch work. This is a great reminder of rules when you're working with fractions so when when you're dividing okay i want to show you how to do it though when you're dividing by a fraction the numerator stays the same you change division to multiplication and you and you flip the bottom fraction but Oh, there you go. Keep change flip. I didn't even know. I didn't hear you. <laughs> so these fours cancel. 55 divided by 11 is 5. Y equals 5. Yep. So now our um equation that is solved for x negative one fourth plus one fourth y but now we know y is five we plugged in five for y right here so that we can find x what is negative one fourth plus five fourths negative one plus five Four fourths, which equals one. Yep. So our solution as an ordered pair, our X is one, our Y is five. Okay. Here, here is the lesson that I will tell you. Um, when I am choosing which variable to solve for at the beginning, I look for the variable that has a coefficient of one. So this X has a coefficient of three, this Y has a coefficient of two, this X has a coefficient of four, and this Y, it's negative one, but it's still a one. I would choose this Y to solve for in initially every time. So let me show you how to do that. You don't have to write it down. If you don't have room, that's fine. But I want to show you how much easier it would have been. Okay, so 4x minus y equals negative 1. I would subtract 4x from both sides to get negative y equals negative 1 minus 4x. Divide both sides by negative 1 to make that y positive. And what that does on this side is it changes the sign of both of those terms. So we get y equals one plus four x. Wow, that's crazy. Take the second equation, three x wow. plus two, and then instead of y, I'm plugging in one plus four x. Distribute to get rid of those parentheses. Combine like terms, 3x plus 8x is 11x. Subtract 2 from both sides. We get 11x equals 11. Divide both sides by 11 to get x equals 1. Wow. <laughs> Plug that back into this equation. y equals 1 plus 4 times 1 
we get y equals five. But see, we got the same thing doing it the other way. You can get the correct answer that way. <laughs> Okay, take a minute to check your answer. If you did not get the correct answer, let's figure out what went wrong. Does anybody have questions? Oh, you gotta do that. I've taught some of this homework. Good Run job. Okay. okay. No. Yeah, you know how I have my stuff with Can I draw yeah. This gal said, I'll buy them for 150. You should, but no. is it the right thing to do? Okay, let's move on in our notes to looking at solving a system with fractional coefficients. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of the fractions first. I'm sure everyone's okay with that, right? Yeah. So in this equation, look at all of your denominators, three, two, and six. What is the least common denominator? Six. Because three will go into six, two will go into six, and six will go into six. So what we're going to do is multiply everything in this equation by six. Okay, so six times two-thirds x. What is six times two-thirds? Six times two is 12, divided by three is four. You guys can you guys can do this without a calculator i believe oh, wow. six times one half what's one half of six three. three three and six times seven over six the sixes cancel and leave us with seven oh my god oh. Oh. If you use the correct number here, then it will get rid of the fractions. So always use the least common denominator, least common multiple. Well, how would you know they're all? What? You, you find the smallest number that all three of your denominators will go into. Three oh, okay. will go into six, two will go into six, and six will go into six. So you kind of talk to the most the denominator. Right. Okay, see, I thought you just brought the six over from the other side. Nope. Yes. Uh huh. Find the least common denominator, then multiply everything by the least common denominator. Okay, so when I multiplied six times two thirds, it's technically six over one times two over three. You don't have to write this if you don't want to, but six times two is 12 and 12 divided by three is four. Six times one half, so six over one times one over two is six over two, which is three. Six over one times seven over six. That is 42 over six, which is seven. Or you could just say that these sixes cancel out and leave you with seven over one, which is seven. Now we have two equations, no fractions to deal with. We're gonna solve this the exact same way that we just have been solving the systems. So using these two equations, 
solve the system of equations by substitution. You guys go. Hey, how about this? We'll finish these two problems on the front page and then be done for today. I think we can do it. <laughs> Is this correct? Oh my gosh, screen. Oh, I don't know. Let me see what you did. Simply. Yes. She said it seriously. It's a lot of fun tonight. Look at that. Everything went on. What did you do? Let me talk you through the beginning steps. Would that help? Yes. But to divide the bottom, positive six by negative one and make it negative six. Correct. Don't the message me So I would suggest solving for this y. So to do that, you would subtract three x from both sides. That leaves you with negative y equals six minus three x. Divide everything by negative one to get a positive y. All that does is change the sign of everything over here. So now we have y equals negative six plus three x. We're gonna take that into our second equation. So instead of y right here, we're gonna write negative six plus three x. So we've got four x minus three times negative six plus three y. Nope, three x. <laughs> equals seven. Now we solve this equation for x. Okay, ready, go. I will. All right. So, I know, I know how to do it, but like, wrong, I guess I gotta go through a little bit. Beat my head in this desk. Hey, did my answer decimal? Yeah, yeah. but you convert it back to a part. So this is not negative five. five. Yeah. This is what? Um, yes. I believe so. Oh, okay. oh, oh my god. god. Oh, 
It's not Thirteen. No, it's negative five. The answer okay, I, to the no, first no, section no. is x equals eleven over five. No, no, it's negative five. No, it's not. How is it negative five? Oh, 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 oh,
You must have been the last one. I got a 40 on it. I'm going to go back to school and then I'm going to die. probably the last six you graduated. I'm going to be here. 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 I'm going to be here